<laughs> All right, we're ready to roll. Coach will make the opening statement, and then we'll get a mic for you. Hey, guys, uh, a good uh, Thursday walkthrough uh, from us. Uh, energy and engagement was, was really good. But uh, um, I know you guys will have questions on, on the injuries. A lot of that's going to be determined uh, tomorrow uh, and potentially on, on Saturday morning, but uh, some of it majority of it tomorrow based on how we get on the grass and guys are moving around and, and functioning with those guys. So excited to go play. Guys are too. And, and uh, like I said early in the week, the challenge is us. And a big emphasis today for our players is uh, the challenge of, of the last 48 hours, the process to get ready to, to go play. Um, they've been good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like what they've done. Uh, we're good this morning, but uh, uh, you know, later today, uh, tomorrow uh, is going to be important too. So we're learning how to do those things right as a program, coaches and players alike. So with that, I'll open it up. Questions? We'll start with Rob. <coughs> Coach, you mentioned several, you've mentioned several times this week about you weren't happy with the way your guys handled like the 48 hours or so before yeah. the game. I mean, what has been your message to them this week and kind small, of? Small, I, I should let you finish. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the message to them really has been about the things that we can control. And, and some of that's during the course of play, things that, that, uh, that we saw, penalties uh, in particular, turnovers, um, communication, small communication on the sideline. Um, you know, we're in a, a third and goal on the end zone. Structure of their defense is a little bit different. We end up walking into the end zone, being able to come over, communicate, which we try to as coaches, make adjustments and incorporate it into the game. It's in, in how you do everything. Um, you know, when I call the team up at the end of practice, uh, are they engaged? Are their eyes looking at me? Are they really listening and hearing what's going on? Um, it's in how you do anything. It's how you do everything. Those little things matter in a, uh, in a football game, um, and they show up every single week. So those little things are, are things that we have to improve on. The last 48 hours, which you guys have heard me emphasize a bunch, Keeping what's important, important, right? Uh, players and coaches got family coming in. Um, you get a chance to enjoy them, but man, you gotta flip the, the switch and, and get back into the football um, and, and because it matters. Uh, it's how you come down to pregame meal. It, it's how you come down to what we call clap session, which is our walkthrough uh, before we watch a highlight video and, and get on the bus. Those little things matter. Um, it's, the little things that add up to winning. And that's why we, I've talked so much about the process here this week. Josh, how, how much are, do you believe in the interaction and the feedback from the players on the field, especially some of your veteran guys and, and maybe making adjustments and what you want to do moving forward? Are you talking about uh, during the game while you're playing, or yeah. are you talking about just as a program in general? I would say I would say more during the game, but if you want to talk about the other aspect of it. I, I do think it's important uh, during the process of developing your program that, that players have ownership. We talk about great teams. It, it comes from within the locker room, the, the accountability, the ownership, the standard uh, of meeting the standard. Um, uh, so I think you got to put kids in leadership roles. you got to give them opportunities to – communicate, fail in communication, learn how to communicate, uh, and be a part of the process too. There's non-negotiables inside of our program. Uh, this is what it's gonna be. I think it's important that you let kids have some feedback and some things that, that can go one way or another too. Uh, they take ownership in that, and, and it gives them a sense of, of being a part of the process. On game day, the more veteran your, your club is, when I say veteran uh, or mature, I'm not talking about they're a junior, they're a senior, they're a fifth-year guy, a sixth-year guy. I'm talking about their, their maturity as a player, their competitive composure, uh, trust in what they see and their ability to communicate. Absolutely, you, you uh, take things that, uh, that they see on the field that you may see differently from the sidelines and be able to communicate when you come over to the benches and be able to uh, make subtle tweaks or incorporate something into, into the ball game. Just in what ways have you seen Jimmy Callaway grow since you've gotten here, and what's the next step for him? Um, grew as a wide receiver dramatically during the, the, the course of spring ball. Missed a portion of, of, of training camp. He's continuing to come back from, from that. <clears throat> He's got all the attributes that, uh, that we're looking for uh, inside. I think learning, continuing to grow, and the understanding of how to play from the end of the previous play from the whistle to the next snap is something that he's got to get better at. Um, but trust him in, in what he's doing and uh, you know, believe that he's got a really bright future as a player here. 
Austin and Weck. Austin Price, Fall Quest. Um, Coach, when you uh, uh, look at the secondary, Coach Martinez talked about this week was big to see if some of these guys can, you know, grow and kind of see who they can trust. So how big is Saturday for a guy like Christian Charles or, you know, Kamal Haddon or Brandon Turnage? And then you as a player, how different were you after a loss? Did you want to get right back to the game field or to the practice field? Players always want to play, for, you know, for first of all. Um, but <clears throat> to me, I think uh, where you fail as a player is, is uh, if your process changes from one week to the next. If, if you're not completely engaged and go through the same routine of preparation on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday. If, if you've got varying levels of, of engagement in, in, in how you prepare, then, then you're setting yourself up for failure at, at some point, you know? And uh, uh, so <clears throat> our players clearly understanding what the process should look like in preparing. You know what I mean? They come in the building on Monday. What does Monday afternoon look for them when they have downtime? What, what video should they be watching? The same on Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, you get later in the week. Uh, you got tests, you got tips and reminders. That preparation's got to be consistent. And so um, that's a part of the process that I'm talking about how we can be better uh, as, uh, as players. In the defensive backfield, want to be able to play more guys. And uh, early in the year, I think you're developing trust uh, with players, and that's based on how they've played, how they perform, how they continue to practice. Um, you know, Christian Charles's guy, you know, you saw him play at a really high level on special teams here the first couple of weeks, continues to get better. Um, a mature kid inside of our, our, our program. I want to see him, you know, give him the opportunity to go out and perform at a really high level in the secondary too, but there's multiple guys like that. Josh, I guess once a game gets started, you know, it's hard to know exactly which way it's going to go in terms of what the defense is going to give you, what guys are going to be there open to make plays. But, but did you envision going into the season that, that Jacob Warren and Princeton Fant would be guys that, that y'all could rely on? And, and what made you believe that if you did? did believe that they had the ability to, to be consistent every down players for us. Uh, both of those guys prepare and work extremely hard at it. There's, they spend a lot of extra time in the building uh, in the afternoons uh, watching video. Uh, getting, you know, when we first got here and through the summer, you know, coming in, getting extra signals, uh, lining up, going up and down the football field so that they can align and, and do their assignment. Um, some of those things led you to believe that they would play at, at a really high level. Uh, again, for every player, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And, and those guys have put a lot into it here through spring ball, summer, training camp, and uh, have played you know, pretty well here the first couple of weeks. There's things that both of them need to and can be better at, uh, but they're going to continue to grow inside this, this offense and this program. Any other questions? And how would you assess Darnell Wright's first couple of games so far this season moving over to left tackle? Yeah, I think he's continuing to gain uh, comfort and confidence uh, playing the left side. Uh, we believe in him. Uh, he's continued to grow in understanding of what we're doing. Uh, fundamentally, has a, a lot of things that he does really well. Can continue to get better in, in some of his pass sets, consistency. Um, but uh, like the effort that he's tried to play with, um, you know, during the course of, of the first couple of weeks. Kelly in the back. Hey, Coach Kelly and Sitz with WATE. Where would you like to see your team grow from week two to week three in this Tennessee Tech game? I mean, the obvious thing is penalties. The next thing is turnovers. Those are both areas that we need to be better at as we get, you know, into conference play. You know, you can't lose a turnover battle every week. You're not going to be successful. You can't lose the field position. You can't change the way the game's played, in particular on third down with penalties. So we got to get better in those two areas. And how has practice been going for you guys this week? Been really good. Guys have had great energy, focus. Uh, love what they've done on the grass. Last two questions, Eric and Wes. Saturday was a really good day for special teams. Always room for improvement. I know you make it a point every day in practice, but how much do you guys emphasize special teams and being a third of the game and uh, a part of the game you guys have to win? Yeah, our, our team knows and um, knows my expectations that we win that phase every single week. Um, we place an importance on it by what we do, uh, starting every day when they walk into the building with special teams meeting. 
um, the extra time that we put into uh, our practice, just the fundamentals and technique of it. Um, when we break from a uh, walkthrough, the first thing we do is, is special teams fundamentals. Those skills all translate over into what you do on offense and defense. Got a lot of young players that have played at a really high level. Got some veteran guys that play. Um, we've had, you know, NFL guys, uh, and I'm talking about player uh, personnel guys, come in here and talk about, you know, the fact is if you're not a first-round draft pick, you better be playing on special teams if you want to play at that level and, and uh, show those guys those things. And um, <clears throat> I think our team understands the importance of it. That showed up in, in the way that we've played uh, for the most part. I think uh, there's a lot of young guys that uh, have played with great effort and energy on those special teams and, and Coach Eck and, and our staff um, because, you know, our position coaches all are a part of, of special teams too. have done a great job of taking ownership in that. Is Paxton Brooks still going to be uh, a part of the kickoff, uh, handle the kickoff duties? Uh, yeah, I mean, long term, I um, believe that he'll be a, a part of that. Josh, did, did Valus Jones Jr. look a little bit more the, the way you thought <coughs> he would in week two physically? It looked like he was a little bit more involved and looked like he had a couple times where maybe his impact on the game was bigger than the stats. Talking offensively or on special teams? Offensively. Yeah. Um, you know, Valus is a guy that uh, really liked what he did uh, through spring ball and, and uh, had a really good summer. Uh, got nicked up uh, early in training camp and, and missed a, a lot of time. Um, he's coming back into the fold as he continues to get healthy and continues to grow and, and some of the subtleties of, of how we operate want him to continue to, to grow and take more ownership in, in what we're doing as we trust him more and more. Uh, you've seen his impact offensively, but on special teams as well, need him to, uh, to continue to grow quickly. All right, thank you. Guys, have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.